What's up game developers, Couch Ferret here. Welcome back to yet another video of making games in Unity. If this is your first time here and you want to learn how to design, draw and develop games in Unity, start now by subscribing and hit the bell so you won't miss anything. Today we're gonna talk about scriptable objects and how to use them to handle game state. But because this use case is a bit unconventional, first we'll talk about the common use case of scriptable objects. What's up guys, it's me, Future Ferret. I'd just like to mention that Codemonkey, Roman Papush and I created awesome mods for the FPS microgame. If you haven't heard about Unity's microgames, then definitely check it out. They are like example projects, but on steroids and you can learn a lot from them. The link is in the description. Back to the present. Okay, what's a scriptable object? A scriptable object is a data container, but unlike mono behaviors, you cannot directly attach scriptable objects to game objects. Instead, scriptable objects are stored as assets in your project, just like images, textures or meshes. One of the main use cases of scriptable objects is to store data like item stats or properties that won't change while playing the game. There's a pretty good video on this use case by Brackies, where he's using scriptable objects to store Hearthstone card stats. Check it out, the link is in the description. But today we use scriptable objects a bit differently. We use them for decoupling our code even further by separating the game's state data from the mono behaviors. State data is the data that changes while we play the game, for example current health, current score or positions of the players. However, we won't be saving this data to load it back later, we'll just use it during runtime. Anyway, if we separate the game state from the mono behaviors, we'll be able to access things like current score without accessing another game object. This is great because we won't be relying on certain game objects in the scene. Instead, the game state will live in the project as an asset and we'll be able to access it just like we would access an image asset. And because the inspector window understands scriptable objects, we'll see the scriptable objects variables in the inspector window, just like we see the mono behaviors variables. Today, I'll be demonstrating this whole concept with a simple example. Okay, let's finally jump into Unity. First, I'm gonna create the game state scriptable object. In the scripts folder, I'm gonna create a new folder called states. In it, let's create a new script called GameState and let's open it up in the script editor. First thing first, let's remove these functions. Scriptable objects don't have start or update functions anyway. Let me zoom in a little, that's much better. Okay, now we need to change the superclass from mono behavior to scriptable object. This is how we say it in code that we want to create a custom scriptable object now instead of a mono behavior. Okay, to make this scriptable object contain any data, we have to declare variables in it. So let's declare a public float game time variable. Okay, what we have created so far here is a template for game states and not an actual instance. Of course in our game we'll have only one game state instance, because more than one doesn't make any sense. But we still need to create an instance out of this, because this script just defines how a game state instance should look. There's a handy attribute that creates a new menu item in the create menu. And with it we could easily create our game state instance that we desperately need. To define the new menu item, we have to use the create asset menu attribute above our game state classes definition. File name defines the new instance's name and the menu name defines the new item's name. Let's save the script and see if our new menu item is in the create menu. Cool, it's here, so let's click it and create the instance itself. If we select the game state scriptable object, we can see its game time variable. Let's create a separate folder for scriptable objects just to be a bit more organized. And let's drag and drop it into this new folder. Okay, now we change the game time's value from the game logic script. So let's open it up. 
To be able to reference the game state scriptable object, we need to create a variable for its reference. And also we have to drag and drop the game state itself into this new variables field. And that's it. No game object that find or get component function calls. Now let's go back to the script editor and assign a starting value for the game time variable. I'm gonna do this in the start function, game state dot game time, and I'm gonna set it to 90 seconds. Now let's define the update function so we can decrease the game time's value in every frame. Game state dot game time minus equals time dot delta time. This will decrease the game time's value with the elapsed time since the last frame. If we run the game now, we should see in the inspector how the game time's value changes over time. So let's hit play and select the game state scriptable object. It works. Now it's time to display it on the screen. For that, let's hit right click on the hierarchy window and go to UI, Canvas. And let's name it UI. On it, we have to create a new mono behavior by hitting the add component button and let's name it UI behavior. Let's move this new script into the scripts folder and let's open it up. I'm gonna remove the start function, but let's keep the update. In the update function, we'll update the text game object to display the current game time. So let's go back to Unity and create the text game object first. Right clicking on the UI game object, let's go to UI, text, text mesh pro to create a new text game object. We haven't used text mesh pro in this project yet, so Unity brings up an importer window. So let's hit import text mesh pro essentials and Unity will import everything we'll need. And now we can close this window. I'm gonna name this text object as game time text. And to find it in the scene view, we need to select the object and hit F while the cursor is in the scene window. This will zoom in a bit and will position the scene view on the game time text object. So let's zoom out a bit so we can see the whole UI and let's anchor this text to the top center and move up a bit. Also, I'm gonna center the text in it as well. Now we'll need a reference to this text game object in the UI behavior script. So let's jump back into the script editor. First, we need to use the text mesh pro namespace. Then we have to declare a new variable for the game time text. I'm gonna declare it as public text mesh pro UGUI and name it game time text. And also let's create a new variable for the game state as well. Let's save the script and let's go back to Unity. Let's select the UI game object and let's fill the game time text variable with the game type text game object and also fill the game state variable as well. Cool, now we have everything we need to change the game time text from script. So in the code editor and in the update function, let's assign a new value to the game time text text parameter and for the right side let's type game state game time and to string the to string function gives back the floats string representation let's try it out well it works but it's kind of ugly i'm going to prettify it to make it look like a digital clock and i'm going to use time spam for this Time spans come from C sharp and they represent time intervals. But to be able to use them, first we need to use the system namespace. I can convert the game time float into a time span with the time span that from seconds function. And then let's save this into a time span variable. The good thing about time spans is that you can format them in any way you want. I'm gonna change the game time text text value to time span that to string, and in the parentheses I can define the formatting itself. So I'm gonna put m single quote mark colon single quote mark ss, and that's it. Let's save it and try it out. Cool, cool, cool. 
So today we used a scriptable object to store data about our game's state and then we displayed it in a decoupled way. And that's it for today folks, don't forget that you can get the project files and sprites on Patreon, link is in the description. And huge thanks to all the awesome Patreon supporters. Thank you guys, you guys are amazing. Next time we'll create our own pixel art font, so we don't have to use this default ugly one. Sounds fun, right? So stay tuned, be sure to subscribe and say hello to us on Discord. See you next time!